Angular versus React. Well, there's, what do you do when you choose? You have to choose one, right? You wouldn't put them together. That would be weird. You, you have to pick one if you're building an application for the web. You're going to be needing a framework, probably, uh, though I recommend not using one if you have the chance to not, because these things are massive. They come with everything you need to build, the kind of application that most businesses need, and they, all the components and techniques are baked into these frameworks for all the common patterns. This is why you kind of typically choose to go towards a framework because it does a lot of the boilerplate work for you and you would might want to choose one or the other, not both, because that would that'd be weird. Yeah, you could, though, would, you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, so which one would you choose? You would pick Angular or React. If you want to choose the most popular one, you're going to choose React. And then Angular is right behind it. So if we're looking at Angular and React, we kind of see that they're basically the same thing. They both provide the same exact same features, the same, the same, the same. So how do we compare them to each other? Well, they have a little bit of different paradigm patterns. Let's walk through those. So Angular and React are both popular tools for building modern web applications, though the approaches are a little bit different with Angular. It's a full-fledged framework. I would say React is too, essentially. It offers a structured development environment that is built with features and functional. It's the same. They're the same thing. Why are we in today's dynamic web development selecting the most suitable framework for the critical building efficient scalable web applications? Yeah, of course. Two of the most famous competitors are Angular and React.js. Both frameworks have large communities, vast libraries, and they basically have everything you need. There are some strengths and weaknesses, although really, if you're going to pick one or the other, you're going to be making a generally a good call. A team is going to be able to use Angular and React. So yes, you're, who, which one? So if you don't know what Angular is, it's a, a, a powerful framework for building web applications. Uh, basically, if you want to not have to write your own framework, you would choose to pick someone else's framework. Angular and React.js are the two most popular. So uh, in particular, Angular is specifically for single page applications where a website feels more like a traditional application when you download it. So it's, it's more of just a UI where things just switch around and you're not really navigating or browsing a website. It's more like an application. Smooth transitions, dynamic updates without reloading the entire page. That's what a single page application is, SPA. Angular accomplishes this by providing structured development environment. Okay, it uses TypeScript uh, or JavaScript if you want. Uh, and uh, it has uh, code organized and easier to maintain, especially for complex projects. Both React and Angular do that, of course. Hmm, makes you wonder which, uh, where were we? <laughs> All right, well, here, let's, let's walk through this. There's actually a drawback, I would say. Well, with traditional applications comes traditional ideas, uh, such as model view controller. This actually is a pretty decent abstraction of an architecture where you have representation of data as the model. The view is what uh, represents how that data can be consumed. Uh, and then the controller binds the two, essentially. So you've got your, your user interface, you've got your data, and then you've got the controller, which is the pathway between the two. MVC architecture is actually a pretty good design overall to help separate concerns. It's a problem, though, I would say for a web front end, because it's you kind of just don't want to have to deal with that. You would much rather a framework abstract those kinds of things away from you and provide a nice clean interface. Angular enforces this separation of concern. So I, I almost call that a, a, a drawback in this case. I wouldn't say it is a good, a good thing. I call that a, I call it a drawback. I, I don't, as an application developer, I don't want to have to deal with it. I don't want to think about it. I just want to build an application with button here and it does this and that increments the counter over there. That's what I want. I don't want to have to deal with the semantics of the framework. The framework should just step out of the way and I would just, you know, be a developer and write the code that I want. That's, that's my desire. So in this case, uh, I'd call this a draw. Although I've used model view controller many times in the past and I still use it today, uh, though maybe for an application when you're developing it from a front end perspective, we don't necessarily need this design pattern. Uh, I would call this more of a uh, more of an ideal for a server model if you're writing uh, server application code uh, from a back end perspective. So what is React? It actually comes from the company Meta who provides this as a strong, so they use it for everything. They use it for mobile native, they use it for web. 
applications, React is going to be the most popular and prevalent and supported and financially backed. If you're making a choice, React is a good one in this case, because basically the whole world is depending on it and they need to make it fast and powerful and strong. Unlike AngularJS, uh, React.js is a library specifically for designing and building user interfaces for web applications that they're the same thing. It's really the same. They're, they're basically the same here. Uh, imagine building blocks. So yeah, okay, I see. You can, it's less of an MVC thing and more of a here, I wanna write this component, this component, and then you can keep components separate, but then use them together. That's actually kind of a nice pattern. I would say that's an improvement over Angular in this case. Uh, and I would probably choose that overall. Each component manages its own data and functionality, making it easy to understand and maintain, so that way it's easy to reuse those components. React.js also utilizes virtual DOM, which is just a, an idea of representing DOM and all everything is encapsulated separately, so that way each component uh, does not, uh, you know, uh, bleed, uh, it doesn't affect other components. So they're all nicely contain, like if I wanted to make a button, I could just make a button, style it however I want, put whatever code and logic I want into it and provide an interface so that way other components can interact with it. That's actually pretty clean, I like that. That's, this, this really, it's reusable. And then I can copy and paste that button wherever I wanted. And then if I wanted to update the functionality of the button to add like a new feature or value or a state of the button, I could do that and it uh, changes for everywhere. Uh, and it's optional, so you can turn it up. It's just so good, I love it. If I wanted to make the button blue and then optionally make it, you know, uh, purple, you could have a purple flag that interacts with it. All the buttons stay blue everywhere else unless you set the purple flag. Oh, it's so good. I love it. So now we're actually getting to the pros and cons between Angular and React.js. Between the two, they're both kind of single page application frameworks that we can use to build web apps. Now we have a general understanding of that, what they can do. Let's, let's take a quick, uh, Angular's got an MVC architecture from a learning curve. It can lead to a steeper learning curve because it's a separation of concerns, which means you have to do things in three places to achieve a goal. Oh, that's just, I don't like that. I really don't. Uh, it's, not, it's not something that should be an easy thing. A framework should be easy to use. Uh, in this case, Angular, on the other hand, adopts a component-based architecture, which leverages JavaScript, making it generally easier to grasp. So you've got just this one sort of screen and page and file to look at with React, that makes it a lot easier to consume and learn and interact with. So in that case, React wins from a simplicity perspective. Overall, that is more valuable in my opinion. If you, Because they both have the same features, which one is easier? The architectures are different between Angular and React. They are different. They're foundationally built differently. So with Angular, for example, it's an MVC model view controller which is a common pattern that I've used many times on the server to represent state of the date of the model, like a user or maybe like a relate or a session of a user that is model data. And then the controller is what interacts with the model to then represent a view of the data. So that way someone consuming the data will be able to see it. That's NBC. It's, it's a well designed for large scale projects. I don't like it that much compared to React where it's component based, this makes a lot more sense from a web development UI front end perspective because you can encapsulate all of the UI and functionality into little components that are reusable. And then it makes it really easy to, uh, to move things around or to add features and functionality without affecting other parts. So I would say this is a better separation of concerns for a web app development experience on the front end. Because AngularJS and React.js are essentially the same because they can achieve the same outcome. You can build single page web applications really easily with ish. Uh, between the two, you kind of only have a few things to check off because they have the same features you would, and they can achieve the same goal. How do you, how do you pick between the two? Well, are, which one's faster? Which one performs better? How, how big is it? How much data does that have transit? Which one's easier to use? Yes, they can achieve the same goals and same outcomes, though it becomes, you know, can I do it more quickly or more easily with one or the other? It turns out uh, AngularJS works on the real DOM, follows NBC pattern, but it has 92 kilobytes of uh, sort of framework size. And you compare that with React, which uses virtual DOM as a sort of a lightweight copy of a DOM, and it's only 46 kilobytes approx approximately. Uh, so comparing the two, React wins in this case, right? It's smaller and maybe a little bit faster, yeah, maybe.
If we're looking at the comparison of a React.js versus Angular on a performance perspective, React wins, uh, uh, basically, especially with some of the most recent releases where they've improved interactivity between the components and the signals and the eventing system. They've made some improvements for performance there on React.js, comparing that with Angular, which has a larger sort of foundational library size, the file size, there's a lot more JavaScript involved in that, almost double, uh, essentially double. Angular is going to be a little bit slower there. From a performance perspective, then in that case, React.js wins, and it just has a smaller bundle size, and they've, they've made some improvements that are is a lot faster these days. And even though it's mentioned here that Angular has some focus on developer experience, that is negligible when it comes to performance on that perspective, and it seems like this bullet point is out of place. Why is that bullet point right there? It doesn't have anything to do with the performance. They're both the same in this case, so I say React wins. If we're gonna look at the two leading most popular web development frameworks for building single page applications, you're gonna look at React, JS, and Angular. These two are the most common ones, turns out. Of course, if we really look down to the, the lines here, comparing the two, we see React is very clearly on the top from a, uh, just in terms of numbers perspective. Just, these are vanity metrics, sure. One framework like we could be that angular was the most amazing framework and just not many people use it in this case that's not not really true or is it who knows in this but we're at least looking at the size of the community we see react is uh, uh, more than double and then the weekly downloads is about double as well from a react perspective more supported more widely used that compared to angular ah uh, I would say don't use a framework if you can. Get away with not using a framework because they are pretty heavyweight, though React wins in this case. So if you are choosing Angular or React and you have a choice, choose React.js. It seems like that's the one to choose in 2024 and after. It is. It, it has the most popularity, performance, speed, ease of use. Those are the, the only things that are left to really compare because they both achieved the same thing. They both had the same features and capabilities, essentially, but they go about that doing it a little differently. Let's look at some of the common questions. What's the real difference between Angular and React? Angular is a full framework and React's library. I, who cares about this distinction? It doesn't really matter. They achieve the same thing. Uh, why is React faster, virtual DOM, and snappy rendering? Ooh, React's faster, that's why. Why is React more popular, simplicity, flexibility, massive community, Angular is better? No, not really, they both have the same thing. Is React easier? Yes, React is easier to use. Which framework is better for large-scale projects? They say on this, uh, on Geeks for Geeks, Angular is frequently used for large scale, though I would say you can do the same thing with React, so it doesn't really matter from that perspective. Which framework offers greater performance? React is well known for its performance, and which framework is an easy learning curve? React is the answer. 